Hi, here's a walkthrough and demo of the touchscreen interface I'm running on my 1987 BMW 325, which is running Megasquirt for engine control and runs a VGT turbo. If you're stumbling upon this video, check the link in the description for more details on the hardware I'm using. Rather than taking a video of the touchscreen installed in my car, I'm going to do a walkthrough on a simulated version of it to give better image quality, but it works exactly the same as the version installed in my car. I'll include a clip of the real thing at the end of this video. So first, a little background. This is running on a Nexian HMI display, which is a touchscreen bundled with a powerful microcontroller that abstracts out lower level graphics driving and touchscreen functionality that needs to happen to have smooth animated images. You can run one of these touchscreens as a standalone device, but in my case, I'm using a TNC 4.0 to send data and receive data back and forth between the Nexian and the TNC. Uh, via a serial connection. This means the microcontroller code I write for this functionality is very simple. For example, for an oil pressure gauge, I read the value from the sensor about 20 times per second and send it on to the Nextian over the serial connection. The Nextian editor software makes it pretty straightforward to control the angle of a gauge needle based on the values it received over the serial connection. Okay, so walking through my own implementation, what we've essentially got here is my home screen, uh, which mimics a stock onboard computer that comes in 80s BMWs. I configured this image with hotspot buttons on top of the picture buttons and customized the buttons in Photoshop to read their actual functions in the touchscreen. For example, pressing the hour date button changes the time display to a date display like the stock onboard computer. The Nexian display has a built-in real-time clock and an onboard coin cell battery, so the clock on the Nexian will continue to keep time even when you shut your car off and shut off power to the Nexian. So the next time you shut the car on, the time and the date will still be correct. The clock itself and the timing of it can be synced to the clock in your PC when you flash the software, um, so that's, that's pretty handy. So there's no need to really uh, make an adjustable time and date here, although you could if you wanted. So in addition, in my implementation here, there's a hidden button on the right side of the simulated LCD display. This will bring up an analog clock that mimics the analog clock that came as an option in some 80s BMWs. This clock has plus and minus buttons for adjusting the time, uh, you know, originally in the car. But in this case, I've mapped them as navigation buttons. The plus button takes you to the next page, and the minus button takes you back to the home screen. So next I'll run through the various gauges, starting with the boost gauge. With this simulated version, uh, the needle's not going to move. Um, there's no car hooked up to it, so it's not actually getting the data. But it, when it's installed in my own car, the TNC microcontroller receives intake manifold pressure from my engine ECU over the CAN bus and sends it, on to, sends it along to the Nextian display over the serial connection. When the Nexian gets new data, it redraws the gauge needle. In my car, this happens 20 times per second, so the gauge moves around constantly and smoothly. Uh, for now, I can move the gauge manually by simulating a message being sent from the microcontroller to the display. For example, I can set uh, the map value to 200, or about 15 psi of boost. So I say obc.map.val equals 200, and I send that, and you see the gauge jumps around. So what happens is the, the TNC microcontroller is constantly sending a message like this with the actual value of the manifold pressure so the gauge moves around correspondingly. Uh, at the bottom of each display screen, um, just like on the analog clock, there's some navigation buttons. Uh, the back button on the left navigates back to the home screen, and the forward button brings up the next gauge. Navigation happens sequentially in the order that the buttons appear on the onboard computer screen. So going back to the home screen, uh, the order that you'd cycle through is boost, then air fuel ratio, then turbo, which is uh, basically an enhanced version of the boost gauge that we just saw, and then oil pressure, and then fuel pressure. After that, it'll go to um, some pages that allow adjustment of some of the control, control loops that run in my car. So first there's VGT control, then my wastegate boost control, and then finally, there's a display button down here that allows adjustment of the screen brightness. 
at the moment, uh, these, you know, 110, 100, 1000 buttons don't do anything. Um, but, you know, I could potentially use them to reset the clock or do some other functions. So running through uh, all these gauges, we'll start with the boost gauge that we just saw. Right, now again, I can adjust this value back to something else. And in the car, you know, this would be adjusting constantly. So then when I press the next button, it'll bring up the air fuel ratio gauge. Uh, so this air fuel value is taken from my wideband O2 sensor. The analog output of the wideband controller is read by the Megasquirt engine controller. Then the Megasquirt sends the value over the CAN bus network to the TNT microcontroller, which then sends it on to the next gen display here via serial. So next up is the turbo gauge. So this turbo gauge uses the same base gauge as the boost gauge, but it adds additional data. I'm going to have to go on a little bit of a tangent to explain this, so, uh, so bear with me. So at the top, there's two uh, bar charts or bar gauges that show the position of my VGT actuator in real time and the turbo shaft speed in real time. I run a VGT control algorithm on the TNT microcontroller. So it takes in various parameters from the engine controller via the CAN network. It calculates the ideal size of the turbine nozzle, um, which allows the turbine to act like a very small turbine or a large one or anywhere in between. So as an overly simplistic explanation, if I'm cruising along, the vanes stay relatively open, a uh, big area here on the right, so the, the gauge would be all the way on the right. Uh, when they're open, that gives me good fuel economy, but it also gives a slow spool up. But when I'm making full boost, it'll allow maximum power. Um, so if I'm cruising along, they're wide open, or maybe they're mostly open, uh, depending on exactly how I set it. If I then suddenly go full throttle, that means I've demanded full boost from the engine, so the vanes are going to close up, which increases the pressure in the exhaust manifold and helps the turbo spool faster. In that condition, uh, they don't close all the way, uh, but they close up as much as they can before they really start to restrict the the flow through the engine, um, which would actually slow down the spool. Um, so it's kind of like finding a, a happy medium between closing them up enough that you get aggressive spool up, but not so much that you choke the flow. So once the turbo spools up and I reach my target boost, um, I open the vanes up fully. That minimizes the exhaust back pressure and maximizes horsepower. Um, once the turbo is spooled up, I can leave the vanes wide open. It's not going to lose any boost pressure. Um, there's enough energy in the exhaust with the, the vanes fully open to keep the turbo spooled up. Um, so basically, these meters at the top of the page let me monitor the VGT vane position and then correspondingly how the turbo speed is responding and how the boost pressure is responding. At the bottom, there's a line chart um, that shows some details on my wastegate. So I use an onboard compressed air source for boost control. In my case, it's a small compressor and air tank that's mounted in the trunk of my car. I use the two solenoids uh, for electronic boost control. So one solenoid pressurizes the wastegate dome with that onboard compressed air. The other one vents pressure from the dome, um, decreasing the pressure in it. So, Ignoring that compressed air source and the solenoids for a moment, uh, like most turbo setups, my wastegate is primarily actuated by the pressure at my compressor outlet. That pressure, that pressure as I build up boost, pushes against the spring in the wastegate. So at a certain point, it opens the wastegate by pushing against the wastegate spring. You run a stiffer spring, you get more boost. Um, so when I have these solenoids and compressurize the other side of the wastegate diaphragm, Basically, I can add to the spring pressure with compressed air pressure. Um, I use a closed loop boost control, uh, sorry, a closed loop PID control to precisely control the pressure in the wastegate dome from that compressed air source. The Megasquirt engine controller has a boost target table and can broadcast the boost target over the CAN bus. So the TNT microcontroller gets that boost target in real time whenever the car is running. And so knowing that value and knowing the baseline boost pressure with just the wastegate spring by itself, I can calculate how much pressure I need on the other side of the wastegate dome to 
get to my target boost level. So the line chart at the bottom lets me see what the target dome pressure is and what the actual dome pressure is in real time. That way I can monitor how that PID loop is, uh, is performing in real time. As one final tangent, um, this wastegate dome pressure control doesn't just let me achieve any boost level, but it also lets me make sure the wastegate stays shut when the VGT control closes up the veins during spool up. And it does that by basically applying maximum pressure to the wastegate dome. So when I close the wastegate vein, or when I close the VGT veins, uh, this increases exhaust manifold pressure. That helps the turbo spool, but especially if you're using a light spring in the wastegate, you can create enough pressure in the exhaust manifold that it actually forces the wastegate open. So even though you haven't made boost pressure yet, and it's not the boost pressure pushing the wastegate open, the actual exhaust manifold pressure can boost it up, uh, can, can force it open. So applying pressure to the top of the wastegate helps keep it shut when the VGT is really working hard to spool up the turbo. So anyway, moving on to the next gauge, um, actually there's another page within this gauge. So if I press the, the plus button, I get several more bar, bar charts that show real-time data. Um, so, you know, target boost, actual manifold pressure, right? So uh, especially when I'm accelerating, um, I can monitor if I'm actually achieving my target boost by just comparing these two gauges. Turbine size against the wastegate, uh, sorry, the, the VGT vein position. Uh, EMAP is exhaust manifold pressure, EGT self-explanatory, uh, I've got a temperature probe, um, and there's a built-in amplifier in the PCB that I've built that runs all this stuff uh, to take that raw um, temperature probe voltage, amplify it, and send it on to the TNC microcontroller to uh, get a you know, degree Celsius value, and then finally turbo speed. So going back, we're back at the turbo page. I can click the next button. We get to the oil pressure gauge. Um, so this one's a lot simpler. It's just an analog pressure gauge that's run directly by the TT microcontroller. The TT sends the data on to the next gen. The next gen draws the oil pressure in real time. Fuel pressure is the next one. Uh, same idea. It's an analog pressure sensor read by the TNC microcontroller, sends the data here to the next gen, which displays the, the gauge. Um, in this case, the, the fuel pressure is actually referenced to my manifold intake manifold pressure so that I can see the actual fuel pressure across the injectors, which should always be constant if the fuel pressure regulator is working properly. So if I see this needle swinging around wildly, I either know there's something wrong with the uh, fuel pressure regulator, or maybe I'm running out of fuel pump. Um, one thing I should mention is all these parameters that are displayed here are also sent back to the mega squared engine controller over the CAN bus. So they're not just sent to the next gen to display, they're also sent back to the, the mega squared. So if I'm doing a tuning session, I can run, I can pull a data log on the tuning session with the Megasquared ECU. And basically I'm adding all this extra data to the data that the Megasquared already has by sending it from the TNC over the CAN bus back to the Megasquared. So fuel pressure is not something you would normally plug into uh, like a Megasquared 2, but in this case I can record that as well. So these next pages um, allow me to adjust the VGT and wastegate control loops in real time without having to reflash the TNC firmware every time I want to make a change and try out a different setting. Um, and it might be worth mentioning that even though I gave a pretty long explanation of the boost control and the VGT control, there's actually several different modes that they can run in. Um, so, for example, I can independently change how the VGT acts during cruising with this cruise mode button or during spool up with the spool mode button. Right, so one of the modes, for instance, is during cruising, I always leave a, the, the veins wide open. Or in another mode, I keep them mostly closed up uh, to kind of pre-spool the turbo even before I hit the, the gas pedal. So it just kind of depends on how I want the car to run. So I can cycle through those modes by pushing the button here. Right, and then I can send those values out 
and we'll see a message get generated every time I do that. And so that message then goes to the TNC microcontroller, which in real time updates those parameters and changes the operating mode. If I click the spool settings button, I've got all these settings that I can input to uh, do really detailed control of the, the BGT algorithm itself during spool up. So for instance, the spool balance factor, I can click on that and it's going to bring up a, a touchpad where I can put in some numbers, say 5.0 for instance, say OK. Um, I click this update button. What I do is I read the values out that are, are being run on the TNT microcontroller in real time. So all these values would update. Right now it's not connected to a car, so they're not going to do that. But if I go ahead and type in a value, I can modify whatever those are. So now we see that's two. Then I can click send and it's going to send out a message to the TNT microcontroller and adjust these in real time. So going on to the next page, this is like my wastegate control page. Um, so again, I have different modes for boost. One is a normal, like fully closed loop uh, boost control where it takes the boost target from Megasquirt and in real time calculates how to control the wastegate dome to achieve that target. But another mode um, is almost like the LA mode where it basically completely disables the dome pressure control so it only runs on the wastegate spring pressure. Right, so I can send those values out as well. So we see that one, it got sent out. And then I can click into these settings and change things like the PID values, right? So let's say 1.1, I can send and it's gonna send that message out. And so I can control, you know, to really granular level, the control loops on my car in real time with this touchscreen interface. Uh, finally, the last page is a simple brightness control slider. So you see as I move it up and down, the brightness changes. Um, so that will change the brightness on the screen across all the pages. So if I'm driving at night, I can turn down the brightness and not blind myself. So that covers it for the uh, display demo. If you're paying attention, you notice the clock's been running this whole time. It works the same way in the car. The clock always is, uh, is always running in the background. So even as you navigate across the pages, it's always keeping accurate time. So uh, next we can move on to a little clip of the real display in action in my car. Okay, so now in the car, we can see things are up and running. Again, I can push our date to switch between the clock and the calendar mode. I can bring up the analog clock. Got a boost gauge. Bring up that turbo gauge. So let's go ahead and start the car.